All right, so what the fuck is up? You know what I mean? Now, I haven't gotten the chance to get up in the gym as much as I would like to because I've been sick as fuck. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck it is. Everybody getting sick right now. Um, I'm feeling a little bit better. Haven't really had the chance to train or nothing. So I wanted to take some time while I'm incapacitated and then just like, share some ideas and perspective based on some things that I've experienced or observed as well. So I wanna share with you guys why I believe every man should train, strength train, and prioritize their nutrition. So um, number one, uh, respecting your body, respect for the temple. Socrates once said, food and exercise work against disease as medicines and it's true uh, especially with what we know nowadays about exercise and what we know nowadays about nutrition not only can these things help you to prevent disease but they can also greatly greatly you know either mitigate a disease that you've been previously diagnosed with or even have the potential to cure those things at the end of the day, our body is our temple. Um, it's an abode for our mind and spirit. And so we need to treat it like that. So I, I know a lot of guys who are a little bit older than me who wish they would have taken some time to take care of their bodies when they were young men. So respect your body. It, it's very, very important to respect your body because you don't want to later in life regret some decisions that you made when you were a younger man. Moving on to... Another one of my favorite quotes from Frederick Nietzsche. What does not destroy me makes me stronger. And so this brings me to my next topic, number two. Life itself <laughs> is resistance training. In the gym and in life, resistance, resistance, you know, isn't just about the weights. It's about building character, resilience and grit, right? Purposely putting yourself through hard shit so that you can train yourself to then deal in the future with harder shit. When you, it's like a bullshit threshold. If you train yourself to deal with bullshit up here, right? You know, everything else in between that doesn't seem as crazy. And so, you kind of have to cultivate this mindset of self-progression. Self-progression itself is a lifelong endeavor. And when you teach yourself to purposely go through hard things, you can kind of find the hidden lesson in all those things, right? Which also kind of leads me to, you know, number three here which is self-mastery through discipline. So Marcus Aurelius once said, you have the power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this and you will find strength. So what does that mean? What, how does that pertain to self-mastery through discipline? Discipline nutrition and training mirror the greatest challenge of all, mastery over one's own desires and impulses. So when you develop control over these impulses, you can discern what is important now and what is just noise. Because think about this, if you can't control yourself, you're no better than an animal. If some of you guys have dogs. I love dogs. I have a dog. What happens when you are, are about to give the dog a treat? They fucking bug out, right? They'll do anything for a treat. They're literally just living for desire at that point. They'll do anything for a treat. They'll fucking flip over. You know what I mean? They'll give you a little paw. They'll do a little, you know, song and dance, whatever. But that's, that's you. That becomes you if you are a victim of your own impulses and cannot control those things. How can you hope to achieve anything great if you can't even set aside time 
to put the drink down, put the weed down. Stop fucking jacking off when you're when you're bored or you know when you're lonely and just actively reel those things in and use that power for the things that can align yourself with that life you want to live. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't have certain desires. I'm not saying that at all. But I, I'm saying that you should recognize the difference in the, the short-term pleasures and the long-term successes. Which also kind of brings me to this next point. Number four, harmony and equilibrium. This is actually one of my favorite quotes. This is from George Hackensmith. And if you guys you know, know anything about weightlifting in general, you'll know that George Hackensmith was the creator of the hack squat. Um, not only that, he was a brilliant philosopher, brilliant thinker. The muscles of the body represent the workings of the mind. I say this all the time. Your physique is the physical representation of your mind. The fact of the matter is you have to develop some sort of sense of equilibrium, some sort of sense of balance to develop a, a, a good physique and to maintain that physique long term. You don't want to become super polarized. You don't want to be, you don't want to be super, super on the end of like dreaminess or getting lost in like just the just just the straight spirituality of things but you also don't want to go on the other end either of the the egoic parts of yourself just straight egoic material possession things like that it's like this side's complete light this side's complete darkness guess what though on both ends of the spectrum complete light and complete darkness still blind you from what is most important. Harmony, equilibrium, developing some sort of like a middle approach. Tibetan monks talk about the middle way. Now that That's very practical here as well. As we sculpt our bodies, we simultaneously refine and mold our thoughts, ensuring this like harmony between the two. That completely spiritual, dreamy side of the mind the egoic material side of the body. We merge those two, which transitions well into number five, manifesting your potential. Nish once said, become who you are. Human potential is a endless horizon, just waiting to be explored. Your potential, your depths are infinite. You should act that way. You should stop creating these limiting beliefs and recognize your own inherent power. We are all, we are all co-creators here. We all share, in essence, the same nature. So through consistent effort, we progressively unveil layers of our authentic self. Through some of the things we mentioned before, putting yourself through hardship, mastering yourself, right? Creating a sense of discipline and aligning yourself with the endeavor of self-progression. We recognize who we are truly as individuals and truly at being aligned with our most, our highest, most authentic selves. And so that's what helps you to obtain that potential that, you know, that and recognize how powerful that truly can be, which is appropriate if you would like to create a legacy. Uh, so number six, your legacy through vitality. So your legacy can only be facilitated through your health, right? The healthier you are, the longer you will be around to make an immense change and add value to society. The legacy you create isn't just measured by the tangible assets that you know we, we amass. It's just your riches or the fucking car or how many bitches you fucked or uh, 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 how much money you got or how big's your crib. But by the, the intangible things, the imprints you know, we leave, you know, to, to guide and um, to inspire and even become a beacon of strength and, you know, vitality for our loved ones and, you know, the people that, you know, align with us, our tribe. So it's important to be present both in spirit 
and in a robust, healthy form so that we can kind of continue to make those contributions to society. Marcus Aurelius once said, the best revenge is to not be like your enemy, right? So how does that pertain here? In a world that is increasingly leaning towards a sedentary lifestyle, especially, you know, just given what we just talked about, instant gratification, the true legacy is standing out, um, being true to yourself, not falling victim to the crowd, um, living life with, with vibrancy and laying down a legacy of health and vitality. The healthier you are, people respect that, right? When we look at a good physique, why do us men inherently, you know, look at, you know, others, other men's physiques and be like, oh man, I fuck with that. Like, I, you got a good physique, right? It's because you know that individual earned it through merit, right? Whether enhanced or not, right? That individual, you're like, oh shit, like I see you. I see you, I know that you had to put in some sort of work and you know that you can do the same thing. And so that's why it inspires us. So think about that. You can be that beacon for others too. You can inspire others just like others inspire you. Now, the next one I wanna talk about, I'm gonna get kind of deep here for a second too. So uh, fortitude in adversity. We talked about this a little bit ago, you know, in um, number two. The adversities life throws at us are much like the weights in the gym. And we talked about that, you know, earlier, right? Um, they're heavy, you know, they demand effort. They demand, you know, um, methodical planning. And sometimes they can feel insurmountable. You know, we all have been there at some point. Um, but with each challenge we face, and this is something I want you guys to listen to especially. With each challenge we face, we build not just our muscles, but our character. And that's the most important thing. We forge a spirit that is unyielding and resilient. Socrates once said, he who conquers himself is the mightiest warrior. And I love that quote. I love that quote so much. A well-nurtured body and a well-fed mind, bolstered by the discipline of strength, arm us with the tools we need to face life. With unwavering devotion and courage it teaches you and when you when you when you go through life like that it teaches you self-respect it teaches you to respect yourself you know it's like it's almost like it gives you the merit to deem yourself worthy so number eight you know uh the journey of self-respect to embark on a path of well-being is to embark on a path or journey inwards. With each deliberate decision that you make to nourish your body, take care of your body, to accomplish your goals, to take one step further to accomplish your goals, Lao Tzu once said, the journey of 10,000 miles begins with a single step. So with each deliberate decision you make to go in the direction of your goals, we're making a profound statement of self-respect. You need to realize that and, and deem that important as well. And I'm going to bring uh, George Hackensmith back here. Um, he's, he's got a lot of bangers, bro. Right? He's a brilliant individual. Not only just a fucking tank, but a brilliant individual. So as Hackensmith once emphasized, by intertwining the mind and body, it's evident that by respecting and caring for one, we inherently uplift the other. And so when we prioritize our health, both like mental and physical, we send a clear message to the universe and ourselves that, like I said earlier, like that I am worthy. I am deemed worthy. I am worthy by merit. I am worthy through evidence. The journey of strength um, and you know, nutrition and taking care of yourself, um, while outwardly kind of appears physical, right? A lot of people just highlight a lot of those aspects as well. It's deeply intertwined with your soul's journey. You know, through it, we don't just sculpt our bodies, we sculpt our destinies, right? Because if you have merit and you recognize that you can achieve some pretty fucking cool shit with your body and you could go through hard stuff and get to the other side, you recognize that you are the master of your fate. You are the captain of your soul, right? I'll share with you an experience that I went through, right? So there was a time in my life, I was dating a girl, and I'm not going to, you know, throw any names out there. I forgive her. We're, you know, we still talk. We're really cool now to this day. 
Um, I don't hold any resentment for anybody. I'm not the type of guy that holds resentment. And you know, to be honest with you, I'm not a, a perfect human being either. So I can't just sit here and point fingers at anybody. You know what I mean? All I can just acknowledge is the situation that of itself. So I was dating this girl. Um, I found out that she kind of, you know, you know, betrayed me and that's okay, whatever, you know, but because that, you know, I was betrayed or felt betrayed, I broke up with her. I expressed to her that I wasn't happy with her and that we needed to stop dating. At the time we were living together, um, she was kind of taking care of the home, um, and some other stuff as well. And I was just working and I was paying for the house, but her name was on the lease of the house because I broke up with her, right? She had kicked me out of the house and I had no place to go. Um, I, I called people. You know, but but nobody wanted to help me, um, and I wasn't about to sit there and beg anybody. So I was homeless for about a week. I slept outside, um, it, you know, and it was in a way it was a little devastating. But like I realized that, okay, all right, let's take stock in my life for a second. Like I still have a job. I still have a gym that I can go to. At the time, I was working three different jobs. I was working at the gym as a coach. As a trainer, I was working at a GNC, and I was also um, online coaching, virtual coaching, like I do now. I've been doing this a really long time. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm homeless now. I'm sleeping outside for a week, but I still have access to a shower. And because I still have access to money, I could get food when I need to get food. And so I would sleep outside, and I would wake up, you know, super early. I, I, I'd walk to work, you know what I mean? I would, I would train. And then I would shower, right? And then I would go to the local Chipotle right across the street and I would get Chipotle. And that's literally all I did. I just survived off of Chipotle and I would shower at the gym and I would like, you know, if I, if I felt like I was missing some sort of minerals, I, ha I was working at a GNC. So I would, I would get supplements from there. You know what I mean? Sometimes I would steal them, whatever. And I'll, I'll openly admit that. I'm not a perfect human being, but I needed to do what I needed to do to survive. And I would still, at the time I had a, I had a child, I would still find time to go back and, and, and tuck my daughter in at night. You know what I mean? Whenever, you know, the, the woman I was dating at the time allowed me to do that. And no qualms, no arguments. It just, it is what it is, you know? And I suffered gracefully. And so I ended up, you know, meeting another person that, you know, it was another, it was a, it was a, it was a woman fucking just butch shorty. You know what I'm saying? She was staying at the apartment building I was staying at. Um, she was like, yo, I see you sleeping outside. Um, do you need a place to stay? And I'm like, yes, I need a place to stay. Um, and in return, I was selling weed, right? And so I was like, in return, I will give you weed. You know what I mean? I'll give you weed and I'll, I'll, I'll pay bills, just whatever, right? Just, just, I need a place to stay. And so that was our agreement for a while. Right? And that worked out for a little bit. And then what had happened subsequently after, the woman I was with at the time, she realized, like, all right, well, I can't obviously take all of these bills. I got I to gotta go somewhere. And so she left and she advised me that I could just take over, you know, paying for the apartment like I did previously. And so I advised the person I was staying with at that time that that's, that's what I would do. She didn't appreciate that. She ended up just throwing all my stuff out outside. There were some things that were missing out, you know, outside with all my stuff. There was a lot of things missing. I, I, I go back in to get the things. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? You know, I, I come on, like I need some answers. Like, what the fuck is this? So she pulls out a gun, get the fuck out of my crib. I'm like, all right, you can just keep it. I don't need it like that. You know what I'm saying? It's not worth it for me. So I take whatever's left and I try to get settled into my new place. Well, not my new place, but the place I was living at before. Um, but now that I own, right? So a couple of months pass. Um, eventually in the apartment complex, there was a huge fire, right? Which unfortunately took my things and my, my entire apartment burned down and I lost everything again. So in the span of a couple of months, I had lost everything multiple times. <laughs> um, so I was homeless yet again. And so I, I didn't know what to do. You know, I had nowhere to go. At the time, a really good friend of mine, Sebastian, he offered to let me stay at his crib for a little bit while I kind of got back on my feet. And all I did was work. And eventually, I ended up securing another place. All those things happened. But I maintained mental fortitude through it all. Did not skip a day at the gym. Did not skip a meal. In fact, that was probably the, some of the best shape I was in in my entire life. Well, besides now. At that time, I was still natural too. I prioritized my, my, myself. And so when 
everything in my life was going to shit. I valued my mindset overall and it put me in a direction that, you know, I, I didn't even think that was possible. So it can be done. You are only as strong as you perceive yourself to be. You only get there through all those things that I mentioned earlier. So remember these things, my brothers. Remember that strength training and taking care of your body is more than just the aesthetics of it all. You need to develop an equilibrium of all the things and you need to do all the things. Yes, you need to do all the things. And it's important to recognize that, especially if you wish to become the highest version of yourself. Because sharing some of these experiences with you, giving you examples and giving you some of my ideas, um, hopefully help you create deeper uh, perspectives of yourself. If you wish for more insight on nutrition, on health, on fitness, on philosophy, uh, please subscribe. Um, you can either subscribe to me on you know YouTube, you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Nick Brolic on pretty much everything. And I am looking forward to seeing you guys on the next one.